everybody and welcome back to the channel today's video is going to be a collaboration video as you can probably tell um today we have victoria ajadi joining us from that niger girl a lot of you probably already know how she is the ish when it comes to nursing it comes to you know talk on uk coming to the uk as you know she's already smiling she already knows it too. we already know that we're here to tap from your wealth of experience victoria i told you yourself <laughs> Hi Tola, thank you so much Hello. for having me on your channel. Hello everybody, it's good to be here. My name is Victoria, also known as That Niger Girl. Um, I'm a Nigerian nurse, currently residing in the United Kingdom, and um, yeah, I'm a YouTuber too. Um, so yeah, I'm glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Thank you for honoring our invitation. Um. All right, so those of you who are watching this video probably follow me for my health care content and you have been asking recurring questions and some of them I cannot answer on my own and that is why I've brought a nurse. All right, so a lot of questions have been coming and most of them have been towards the um, line of healthcare jobs regarding um, whether they can come in. Um, some of them are registered nurses but are desperate to come into the UK and start working and because they have been waiting for the nursing route and they see that it's taking a longer time or for one reason or another, most of them are asking a question of, I'm a registered nurse or I'm an assistant nurse or an auxiliary nurse. Can I come into the UK as a healthcare assistant? I've gotten this question more times than I can count. So I just want you to give a concise answer um, as to whether this is a good idea um, if there are any um, backlash that can come from it, if this is a safe thing to do, what is your advice on whether nurses registered or practicing or, you know, training nurses should come to the UK as healthcare um, assistants? Thank you for that. Um, so um, healthcare assistants are a set of uh, professionals who are part of the healthcare team in yeah. like any healthcare organization. So whether in the hospital or in care homes or for home care, support workers, you know, there are healthcare assistants, they work as part of um, the multidisciplinary team. So in the UK, the roles of healthcare assistants, um, it quite varies sometimes, you know, like, like I said, from different organization to another. And I think where you should start from as a registered nurse who is trying to or contemplating coming into the UK via the HCA route is knowing what the roles of the healthcare assistant is. Now, if you're already practicing in your country, you probably have an idea of what um, an HCA does. Yeah, mm HCA -hmm. basically do most of the things that nurses do except um you know giving medication yeah. some um some really um high end medications and, and you know care, other things, things like care plans and you know some other things but basically if you are practicing in your country you already know what hcas do you can however read further about hcas specifically in the united kingdom so it might be different a bit you know in the united kingdom so uh, I mean, Google is your best friend. Go on Google, check what HCAs do. Look out for videos on YouTube on what HCAs do. So this will give you, give you the right information on what healthcare assistants do. Now the ball is in your court. I am sorry, I'm not going to tell you whether or not to come into the UK as HCA. It's your decision to make. Yeah. So after you've, um, after you've, done your research you've checked what hcas do are you comfortable coming in to the uk with um registered nurse um license you don't really have a license because you're not coming in as a registered nurse but are you comfortable coming in as a registered nurse to work as healthcare assistant if it is something that you see yourself doing definitely go for it but if you don't see yourself doing that then I will say you should wait. Also, you need to know that when you come into the um, country as healthcare assistant, you might be, 
I don't want to use the word stalked. You might be in that role for a long time. You might be there for at least a year. Yeah. Yes. Because, I mean, people, your employers are bringing you in into the UK, you know, from wherever country you're coming from. They are business people, really. That's the truth. Yeah. Most of them, they are business yeah. people. So you need to work for the money that they have paid for it's bringing you in. It's a signed contract. <laughs> Contract yeah, contracts. That is why I usually say that you, you know, look out for your, what you are signing before you sign it, you know, and all that. So if you have signed that, you are staying with them for three years before you can move on or, you know, move on from that position. Then you need to stay with them for three years or else you are going to pay. You are going to have to pay them. I mean, it, it will all be in your contract. So whatever you are signing, just make sure that you've read it through and you are sure that. I mean, you are sure that you want to go ahead with it. So you can come into the um, UK as an healthcare assistant and you might have to do that for a number of years according to what is in your contract or you pay and leave the job if you don't want to continue when you get into the UK. I think right. that answers um, it. Next question. What are the requirements for nurses to come to the UK? I know you have made several videos about this on your YouTube channel yeah. in terms of IELTS, um, writing and passing OSCE, you know, the, the requirements that they need. Because a lot of people are confused with the IELTS for um, healthcare workers and the IELTS requirements and type of IELTS to write when in regards to nurses as well i know it's a, it's different but just give us the requirements that we need for nurses and the difference in relation to the requirements for healthcare workers um let me first say that if you want to come into the uk as a registered nurse the one of the first things that you need to do is to get yourself registered um on the nmc portal so the Nursing and Midwifery Council of UK actually has a portal for overseas nurses who intend to come into the UK to live and work as nurses. So I think your first point, I mean, after getting all the information, I mean, some of the information that you need online, the, the major step, one major step that you need to do is to register on the NMC portal as an overseas okay. nurse. Now, on that website, See everything you need is there. there. The reason why I'm saying this is because you get direct information from the source, from the people who will be giving you your pain to work in the UK. You are you'll be getting direct information from them, emails and everything. You can contact them, you can call them, you can send them emails and all that directly. Because YouTube videos ages and sometimes it needs to be updated. Like recently now. There's a discussion around eye health for nurses. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And they are trying to review it. So if you watch my video last year and you are looking at the requirement for last year, you are not updated because, I mean, things are going things on are changed. and on. Yes. Yeah, things, things are, are changing. Involved. So by the mm. time you get registered on the portal, you are getting live um, information directly. Current from information. Them. But yes. as of now, as of today, as of filming this video, you need, I mean, um, as a registered nurse trying to come into the UK, you need to um, have passed your CBT. Your CBT is a computer-based test that is done in different states, in different countries. You need to register online. Like I said, once you register on the NMC portal, I think I'm going to get the portal and give it to Tola so that she can put it right. in the description. In the links. Yeah. yeah. So once you go through that link, you'll be able to register for your CBT and then you'll be able to choose the closest address to you, to your own um, primary place of residence so that you don't have to keep traveling outside of your um, country or of your place of residence to do the CBT. So the CBT is a test of your nursing knowledge. It's basically nursing questions i don't I, I can't remember how many questions there are it's timed as well i'm sorry it's timed yes it is timed but don't worry i mean the time is it is it is so much yeah, yeah. There, there's enough time more than enough time trust me 
more than enough time to do, especially when you've practiced and practiced well. So um, there's a particular mark that you should get. I do, they do not actually give you like the, the cutoff. What they will tell you is, it might change tomorrow. Like I said, right. their requirements and everything keeps changing. So it might change tomorrow. But as of what I know, there's no percentage like, oh, you have to get 80% and then you, are, you, you pass. We don't know what the percentage is. You know, so when another you major it. requirement is um, the test of English language. And um, that's majorly IELTS. So for IELTS, you are expected to have, there are some scores that you're expected to achieve. And there are four parts to IELTS. There's the reading, listening, writing, and speaking. Now, for everything, you are expected to get at least a band seven in each, right. except for writing. So for the writing part, the least that you are expected to get is 6.5 for now. So like I said, the NMC is trying to like review, review it that. so it can change anytime soon in the future but for now that's what the requirement um that's what the requirement is for english um test. those two requirements are what you need to actually get yourself um an interview with an employer so once you have these two employers will be happy to interview you and get you on board you know into the uk but then you'll be coming in as a pre-registered nurse so pre-registered pre nurses and nurses who are um, practicing nurses in their own country, but they are yet to get their full um, NMC pin in the UK. So an NMC pin is, um, is a set of numbers and letters, like your license, that gives you permission to actually work. So the next step for you to do when you get to the UK is to have your OSCE done. So it's like Viva. Uh, if you are a nurse, you understand what I mean. It's like Viva. Uh -huh. You go in, you, you know, they paint different scenarios for you. And then you act like you're supposed to do when you are faced with that scenario in real life in the hospital. So once you pass that also, then NMC will give you your pain. And you are officially a UK registered nurse. So that's the process for becoming a nurse in the UK. Um, so the next question is, what other alternatives can nurses come to the UK with, apart from the HCA route? So for example, I came in as a dependent and then I applied when I got into the country. So what other route can a nurse come into the UK and find jobs as, uh, as a nurse? Right. Um, so another route that you can take like you said uh, one of them is dependence another route that you can take is um student route so you can come into the uk to study for your bnsc or your masters or your phd but, i mean by the time you start studying i mean you're you're, you're not already so it will be easy for you to actually get jobs with agencies yeah. Yeah. yeah and then you won't just be working you you will not be working as a carer most likely they they will um, accept you as a senior carer or a senior healthcare assistant so by i mean with this you already have a good rapport with um different organizations you meet yeah. with your managers and all that they are even the one they are the ones that will even be encouraging you to come and work with them permanently it is more costly, but I mean, if you yeah. can spend that I'm money, yeah. That yeah, yeah, it is another route that you can take. Yeah. Yeah. So, last and final question is: What advice do you have for incoming nurses um, who have been trying to come in, um, who have been struggling, whether to pass IELTS or are stuck at OSCE, or you know, are just they need, you know, one thing to just pass this. Um, level and just come in and start working what advice do you have for them um, for those who are even in the country and are still working what advice do you have for nurses generally um right so if you are planning to come to the uk and um it has been challenging you are not alone that's the first thing i want you to know that you are not alone of course uk is like one of the 
countries that is kind of easier to get into as a nurse, but it is still not like a smooth pass and they will just allow you in. You face different challenges. I mean, from the yeah. CBT, IL, the exams, you know, getting to write them over and over again. I mean, I, I wrote my IELTS twice and I can tell you how, how no, bad okay. I felt <laughs> when I failed mm. it. So if mm. you failed, I don't know how many times, just pick yourself back up and try again. Yeah. Keep trying. If it is what you truly want, keep trying. But every time you try, make sure that you are better than, I mean, your the knowledge is better than the last time. You are not yeah. just going back in. You are not just trying, trying and trying. Yeah, without doing anything different, without having a plan or, you know, a different plan from what you are using before. Information is key. I mean, you yeah. watching this video right now means that you are trying to get information for yourself and it is applaudable i would also advise that you should not be so choosy or so picky when i was coming into the uk i came in i didn't i didn't i didn't come in to work with the nhs if i didn't want to come in to work with the nhs i wanted to come in to work with the care home because i knew i mean i've watched a lot of videos i've done my research i've read a lot and i know the differences between nhs and care home and at that time i was coming in here to make money so i knew that if i came in with the nhs i'm on my own <laughs> so <laughs> i went with what i knew that is going to help me at that time yeah and um i achieved my purpose through that i mean you can come in as a care home nurse you can come in as a private care nurse i mean there are private hospitals that accept nurses you can come in as an nhs nurse i just want you to know that you have a lot of options you need just like we said that it can be discouraging and the journey can be lonely yeah because you're not telling everybody your plan it's only yes. you and your family members that know what you are doing so yes. it can be a lonely journey so it is good to like support yourself with like-minded people join groups of nurses that are having the same goal as you so that you know you get encouragement from others i mean when you fail i helped once and you hear of story of somebody in a group that has failed i helped five times why mm -hmm. are you to say you are discouraged you pick you care, <laughs> care you pick yourself back up and you be like yeah. oh no this person can still be you know doing this at this time so yeah. i've just failed once why will i say i'm tired so when you when you join support groups groups of other people who are like-minded it helps you also to remain focused thank you so much victoria for sharing from your wealth of experience nurses on the channel you cannot say i've not done anything for you victoria has a lot of resources on her channel please go over there subscribe to her channel um thank you so much victoria for coming on the channel we have loved having you here Thank you so much for sharing your truth and, you know, encouraging others with, you know, the information that you put out constantly. Thank you so much for coming on the channel. We would love to have you another time. Um, so that's it. That's our time here on the channel. We will see you in another vlog. Thank or you another for having video. me. <laughs> All right. Bye. Okay. Thanks. Bye. Bye.